Listen up. <laughs> there is lots of room on the porch. Everyone is getting Halloween candy. There's lots. Stop your shoving, get in line, and stop pushing <laughs> off the porch. <laughs> But before we get into it, don't forget, if you want to support the channel, subscribe, hit the like button on this video, and like the bell, do the, do it, so that you get the videos. We have two complete weight loss guides, links are down below, if you want to support us even more, go check those out. Why don't you guys listen? We tell you this all the time, and 9% of you hit that bell for notifications, 9. And then you miss the videos, and then no one views it, and then you're missing out on all this great information. <laughs> You can do better, guys. Come on. Come on. I'm taking you back to 1989 Halloween night. It's dark. Little Nicole, six years old. She's at her Nona's. She's super excited. She's getting ready to go trick-or-treating. She's putting on her homemade bunny costume that her mom lovingly made and thought that somehow carrots go on the knees for bunnies. That bunnies have carrots on the knees. They do, don't they? They did when I was six. I don't know, I've never seen a real rabbit. <laughs> She's got her costume on. She's at her Nona's. Her aunt and uncle come and pick her up and they take her and her older cousin down Nona Street to go trick-or-treating. There goes Bunny Nicole down Nona's road. We hit a brick, no, we get to a brick house. There's a big porch, big enough to hold a lot of e eager trick-or-treaters. Nicole and her cousin climb the porch. All these kids, you get up to the doorbell, ring the doorbell, trick or treat! Out comes an old man. Now the kids are getting excited. They start shoving, they're trying to get in line for the candy. Everybody's going <laughs> Nicole, bunny Nicole being weak with carrots on her knees, shy, a very weak pushover little girl, moves out of the way to try not to be pushed. And in doing so, allows herself to be pushed off the porch. Bunny Nicole falls four feet off this big porch with all these kids staring at her, looking like, why the f did you let yourself get pushed off the porch, dummy? Yeah, all and these kids, they were trying to fight for candy, right? So they're focused on the candy and they shoved you off the porch. Yeah, the youngest, smallest, weakest person on the porch didn't get pushed, allowed herself to be pushed off because she didn't believe in herself. Six-year-old Bunny Nicole's lying in the dirt of this old man's garden, staring at all these people on the porch, staring at her going, what a weirdo, falling off the porch with a costume. That day sealed my fate for most of my life because from that day on, I always allowed myself to fall off porches. And I'm not just talking about a physical porch, I'm talking about the porches of life. Meaning, I have held myself back from everything. I didn't even believe that I belong on YouTube. I believe that there's no room for me on the YouTube porch. And I let, my get, I let myself get pushed off the YouTube porch, thinking that I'm not good enough to get views. I'm not good enough for my information to be shared. I'm not good enough to get my 100,000 subscriber plaque that I'm, I just don't fit in and I'm just not good enough because people don't watch my stuff. They don't watch the videos, they don't subscribe. And I feel like maybe I'm just not good enough. Maybe I don't belong here. Maybe there's no room for me on this porch either. Just like there's never been room for me on any porch because I don't believe in myself enough. I became a people pleaser. I spent my entire life trying to make sure that everybody was happy. I never put myself first. I was always afraid to take up space. So I would hide and I would let everybody else get their glory, I guess, and I would hang back in the corner because I didn't think that I was worth it to take up space or to be successful. Every family gathering, every party, every place that I went, I was the one babysitting the kids and doing the dishes because all I wanted to do was get people to accept me. So I was willing to do anything. I was willing to be the doormat everywhere just so that people would accept me or like me. And guess what? 
that didn't get me acceptance and people liking me. That just got people disrespecting me and continuing to walk on me because I was willingly being a doormat. That caused me to be miserable. Yeah, you teach people how to treat you. And I taught people that I was the babysitter, cleaner, people pleaser, whatever you need, come to Nicole, she'll never say no, she'll work overtime for free, she'll do whatever you need, and she'll never put herself first, she'll take care of herself, she'll just take care of you. So, come on over and shove her off the porch, she likes it. And that's originally, I'm typically, usually I'm the same way as Nicole, and that's actually why we put on so much weight and became morbidly obese. Instead of standing up for myself or advocating for myself or being selfish and saying, no, I deserve to be successful. I deserve to do what I want. I don't need to go to a party and babysit the kids and clean up the garbage. I'm better than that. Instead of that, I used food to cope and I made myself sick doing it. And then I made myself super overweight to where I was 275 pounds and I got sleep apnea where I was stopping breathing 70 to seven times an hour or seven times a night. Then I got plantar fasciitis where I could only walk on one foot. And I did that to myself because I didn't think I was worth anything. I thought I was supposed to be the doormat. Now I realize I'm, I just turned 37 years old. And this is the first time in my life that I'm starting to realize like, you have let people walk all over you. You didn't believe in yourself so much that you have let yourself be miserable. You have so much to give and you're, you wanna help all these people on YouTube and just in your normal life. You are only doing a little bit. You're only helping a little bit of people because you won't let yourself believe in yourself and take care of yourself. This other struggle that I've had, and I know other people struggle with this too, so I'm gonna tell you this sort of story. Every time that I go shopping for clothes or shoes, since I was really young, I've done this, I don't think that I'm worth it to take the time to find the right clothes. Or So if somebody's helping me at the store, if it doesn't fit right or if I don't like it, I feel because they've helped me or they've handed me a size that I have to buy it because I've wasted their time because I'm just an idiot loser. So I shouldn't waste their time. I have to buy what I tried on, whether I like it or it fits or not, because otherwise that person's gonna get mad at me and, and then they won't like me and I just need everybody to like me. I did that for years and shoes was even worse. With shoes, I would go into shoe stores and when they would get me a size, I'll try on only one. Oh, it's fine, okay, I'll get it. Or I'll try on both and then they'll feel kind of funny but I'll go, oh no, they feel pretty good and then I'll bring them home and then I'll be like, yeah, I can't even wear these. They don't fit right at all. So I didn't even feel good enough that I could get clothes that fit or shoes that fit and I'll put my body through discomfort, my feet through discomfort, just because they don't want to ruffle feathers. So I challenged myself today and I wanted to do it today because I wanted to be able to tell you this for the video. I needed new shoes because I pulled a Nicole with my last pair and they were too big and I bought them anyway and I couldn't wear them. So I needed shoes that fit and I made a pact with myself that I was gonna go to the store today, I was gonna take as much time as I needed to buy the right shoes, to make sure they fit, and I was gonna do everything completely opposite that I do when I go shopping. So, I went out, I wore an outfit that's out of my comfort zone, to the mall, a crop top that I wasn't too comfortable with, but I needed to do it. I walked into the mall, first I went and bought clothes and I was I made sure they were the right size, the right fit. I even talked to the cashier and was just my weird normal self and I was so proud of myself. I came away confident. Then I went into the shoe store and I bought a pair of fancy boots. <laughs> and first I tried on one boot and I was about, I was like, oh yeah, it fits, it's great, it feels nice. I was about to pack the shoe because I always did the 
employee's job like I would pack the stuff back in let me know down below if you do this stuff by the way because I know I'm not the only one I would repack the shoes put it in the box the same way that I got them right because I can't ruffle any feathers so I started doing that and I'm like Nicole what are you doing this is not your job and probably I'm not even doing it right and they have to redo it anyway so I'm like plus you didn't try on both boots will you just stop Take a breather, hold on, and try on both boots. You are worth trying on both boots. Normal people try on both boots. So, normally I beat myself up for taking the stuff out and go, people are looking at you. They're like, why, what are you doing? You already tried on the boot. No, nobody cares. Nobody probably even knows I'm in the store. And so I actually put both boots on. And I walked around the store and I looked in the mirror and the employees were staring at me. I was actually one of only two in the store and they were staring at me the whole time and I always feel that pressure like just get the freaking boots they want you to get out of the store just buy them buy them no I took the time I was confident I looked in the mirror and then I said can I actually try on another pair oh no I never did that before I couldn't try on more than one because that would be making them do stuff so I got another pair and Sass was waiting outside because there's a limit in the store. So I wanted to show Sass and I couldn't get his attention by waving. So I actually had to yell his name and call attention to myself. And I got scared when I, whenever Nicole says my real name, which we won't say on camera because it's a secret. <laughs> but whenever she says my real name, I get like scared and I jumped and, like, oh, and I turned around and she was trying to show me the boots. Because I always like his opinion because he helps me get out of my comfort zone. And I'm, I'm the best and I have the best taste. Yeah. That's also why. Exactly. He's perfect. So I stood in front of the door of the store where people were looking at me and I yelled his secret name and he looked at me and I said, do you like these boots or do you like these boots? I was being someone I never was ever before. And I oh. said, can you also with the boots, please buy some jeans that don't have so many rips in them. Look at this. I failed at that. Were you climbing fences before you turned on the camera here? Hello, these are called mom jeans and they're actually popular. I never dress popular. I always dress like I'm a grandma, so. Are those socks popular? <laughs> well, I had to keep some part of my old self. <laughs> to be fair, these were popular in the 90s and, and I always wore funny socks in the 90s too. I ended up buying a pair of fancy boots and I didn't pack the boots up. I left them in their box. I didn't put the stuff back in. I didn't put them in the shoe box and have them all nice for the girl. I let her do her job and that was the best day of my life and I didn't feel bad about it. I was like proud of myself for being confident enough to know that it's okay. I don't have to do everybody's job. That's not what I'm meant for on this earth. It's not to, to clean up after everyone. And then I went to the running shoe store and I bought Ultra Boost and my sass bought me Ultra Boost for my birthday and I was so excited. All I wanted was a pair but I never get the right size so because I'm too scared to actually like go oh actually these don't fit the greatest you know so I went in and I said I need this size and there happened to be this fancy pair of gold Ultra Boost like and they were, they only had one pair and they were in my exact size. And the guy said, okay, I'll go get them for you. And he had to get them out of a fancy case. And I was like super excited and I put them on and they fit like a glove. And, and. They fit like a shoe. They felt like slippers. <laughs> shoe slippers. <laughs> I tried them on guys. I walked around the store. They were, and, and I also want to say this. I get in. I always get like intimidated and, and self-conscious when there are girl salespeople, but when there are guy salespeople, especially like the young ones, I always feel extra self-conscious. And there were three like teenage boys that were employees there that were standing around staring at me with these shoes. So instead of getting embarrassed and self-conscious like I normally do, I started joking and I complimented the one on his jacket and I was walking around saying, are these grandma shoes, Sass? And I was like, actually just being me. And I had never done that before. And it, it felt uncomfortable, but I needed to do it. And I 
felt really proud of myself for being me and I walked around the store, pe employees, people in the store, and I walked to three different mirrors and I looked and I had my Minnie Mouse socks on and looked really dumb with my shoes and I didn't even care because I was being proud of myself. I was loving myself and believing in myself that I deserved to have good feet. And you deserve to take up space and take your time. And I did, and I did it, and I did it not only for me, but for you guys, because I wanted to be able to tell you this success story when I went on camera after telling you all about how I've lived my life trying to get fit in this corner so that I don't ruffle feathers or get people mad at me. And I'm done being in the corner now. I'm taking my life back and I'm not gonna worry about people judging me anymore and I know that I'm worth it I know I'm good enough now and it's not gonna be easy not every day is gonna be a perfect success story when I go to the mall I am probably gonna have setbacks but I'm challenging myself to do that all the time now to just be me and not be afraid to say what I mean and mean what I say. Not be, not worry about what other people think. Like, hello, I'm on YouTube. People say stuff all the time and it doesn't bother me. So I don't know why I still think that I need to just not be me. I've gone through so much trauma in my life. I took that on and I thought that I, if I could just be what everyone wanted me to be, that I could just be loved. And it never worked. It actually just got me more um, disrespect and walked all over. And I just, I wanted to do this video because I know there's more people out there that are like me and that do those things, that don't get the right clothes or don't get shoes that fit because they don't feel like they're good enough. And I want you to tell me in the comments down below that you are good enough because you are. And I'm good enough. And Sass is good enough. And we're good enough to take up space. You get, you, you're you allowed to have some Halloween candy too. Not just every other kid gets the Halloween candy. You get to go on the porch and not have to move out of the way and not be afraid to be pushed off the porch. You get candy and you get to have a choice being first. You don't have to go to the end of the line because Bunny Nicole would have gone to the end of the line and let everyone else go in front of her. No, you get your rightful place in line wherever that may be because you deserve candy just like everybody else. You deserve to be on that porch. So take up space. I'm starting to. Take up the space, get on the porch, and own it. And no, sometimes it's okay to be selfish. I'm gonna start being selfish. I'm gonna start advocating for myself because if you advocate for yourself and you believe in yourself, you can actually help others better by loving yourself, trusting yourself, letting yourself have space, take up space and get the candy and not be last in line all the time, you will actually help more people. You'll be more loving. You'll have better relationships. So down below, let me know you're taking up space. You're worth it. Let's do it together. Let's take up space together and let's not hide anymore because it sucks in that corner it's smelling and has cobwebs. <laughs> so, let's get on that porch, carrots on our knees, and we're getting the candy, and there's no more <laughs> being pushed off the porch. Thanks for watching, guys. Love you. <sighs> yeah. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were coming back. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> Taking up space. Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it.